This conference will conference. Now be recorded. Good afternoon, all. It's indeed a great pleasure um, to welcome you all to the meet. Uh, and let us discuss biodiversity forum. Uh, I'll request all to mute their uh, mic so that uh, something will be very smooth. So it's my great pleasure to introduce all uh, you all to uh, Dr. P. M. Suresham, one of the uh, best known in animal technology. And the mute your voice. Uh, so let me introduce uh, Dr. P. M. Suresan to the forum. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome Dr. P. M. Suresan, scientist, the Geological Survey of India, Western Ghat, Vijayanagar, Sir, Kalikar. Sir, welcome to the forum, sir. It's indeed my great pleasure to introduce you. Uh, uh, Dr. Suresan has completed his post graduation in geology from Saint Joseph College, Devgiri, Kalikar. In 1985, started research career on, uh, under the guidance of the taxonomic uh, professor T.C. Narendran, uh, who is a pioneer in entomology of the University of Calicut since uh, 1987 to 1990. Uh, he had completed years of geological survey of India and worked in various cadres from scientists B to E. In various regional centers like Pune, Patna, Odisha, Barampur, and now in Calicut and heading the center in Calicut. And uh, to the best of his research credit, he has done 60 research publications, in, uh, including monographs, research papers, identification guides, taxonomic revisions. And to the best of his taxonomic credit, he has described seven new genus to science and more than 150 new species. This is uh, work, the volume of work he has contributed to science and world of taxonomy. Uh, and we are really fortunate to have uh, Dr. Suresan here for today. Four students have been awarded PhD and five students are now working under him. And he has coordinated several projects, uh, both in-house and uh, uh, both in-house and external funded projects. So uh, he uh, main taxonomic work is on uh, parasitic hymenoptera, then um, uh, centipedes, scorpions, etc. And uh, it will be an honor to hear him today uh, on the topic understanding insect diversity praying mantids. Sir, uh, welcome to this forum. And uh, now I am requesting you to go ahead with your talk. Thank you very much. The screen share. Hello. Sir, screen share of some. Are you able to see? Not yet, not yet, sir. Not yet, not yet, sir. No? No, no, sir, not yet. It is coming, it is coming. Okay, okay, okay. I think yes. it is good. Now it's yes, good? Yes, sir. It's, yes, it's visible now. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. So we are going to the webinar today. Yes, sir, sir just, just small interruption. Yes, yes, now it's perfect, sir. Please go ahead. It is good. So thank you, Anil, for yes. your nice words. So good afternoon, everybody. Hope you are all safe and enjoy this webinar. So today 
I will introduce an insect group to you. Before that, I want to ask some questions to you. Why, why I am introducing an insect group and what is peculiarity of insects? Why insect diversity is that much important? So, so this, uh, I think, are you visible in these uh, slides? Anil, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, so this is my first question. Why I am talking about I am more interested in insects? I am basically working on parasitic hemiptera, and my interest on praying mantis started in 2004. And this group was introduced to me by Dr. Hamid Gatte in Pune and Tushar Mukherjee from Calcutta. They are the pioneers of working in this group. Why insects? Why I am bothering about more insects? Because insects by kind far outnumber other life forms. That is not the only one reason. Insect diversity or only insects form about 75% of the total animal diversity of the earth. From this slide, you can see the average size of an insect when compared to the, the size is indicating their diversity. Okay. Just for common people, you may be anybody, insects are a troublesome creatures. That is the problem with insects. That is why I think people are not interested to study insects. Anything creepy is coming in your house, office, everywhere, people will, the immediate reaction is to kill that animal, that creature. You can see so many pictures and all these are all not insects and all insects are not nuisance also that I want to stress here. Just I will show the diversity of insect world. You may be familiar with some of these groups. You may not be familiar with the other groups. These are the some images of insect diversity. Just I want to tell you, insects are an ancient group of animals originated in the Carboniferous period of Great Paleozoic era. Around 350 million years ago, insects originated in this earth. Then after that, they become diversified and occupied all the terrestrial ecosystems. They have survived three mass extinctions. You know what are mass extinctions? It is the largest scale destruction of species. Insects witness the birth and death of dinosaurs also. Just uh, this is uh, something interesting points. Suppose if you go back in a time, 250 million years back, you would still have to share your bread with a cockroach. Now cockroach is familiar, I think cockroach is familiar to everybody. If a nuclear war again come, people are, our scientists are telling, the only creature may survive is cockroach. From that itself, you can understand the strength of insects. So again, the story of success. For variety, abundance, and ecological impact, insects were no rival some of multicellular life on Earth. I already told you, 75% of the biodiversity are insects. Then insects affect man both directly and indirectly. Or insects are either beneficial or harmful. What are the beneficial aspects of insects? It is pollination. The only one word is enough. What is pollination? There is no need of explanation. Without pollination, there is nothing on this earth. No animals can or no life forms survive in this earth. So, insects help for pollination, predation, parasitism, wildlife, and human food. And indirect effects are they are indicator species. What is in the indicator species? Some insects indicate the quality of the ecosystems. You might have heard the class of aquatic insects by Dr. Subramanian. Aquatic insects are good indicator species. They tell how healthy your environment is. And another point, they are important components of biodiversity. And they are most species-rich group of animals. And they are important components of complex food chains and food webs in the nature. And more important is, just not most of them are unknown to scientific world. You know, only 10% of the insect diversity is currently known to scientific world and the remaining 90% are unknown. At the same time, they face severe threat of extinction due to human interference in the nature. Again, the story of success. This I am just telling because I want to inform you the importance of insects as a group. 
they have i infra specific diversity that is why what is in the infra specific diversity within species also there are different diversities especially social insects you might have heard about social insects honey bees and a high level of sexual dimorphism male female difference they have di uh, face dimorphism also what is in the face dimorphism in locust you might have heard recently that there is a locust swarm in rajasthan and in north india so a grasshopper which can form different phases in its life cycle some phase it will increase in large numbers they will migrate from one place so that is called locust migration they have functional diversity also what is the functional diversity there are some ants they can grow fungus there are seed eaters there are honey ants slave making there are so many things are there then as far as the numerical abundance you just see around one lakh columbolans in a centimeter square you can imagine centimeter square of soil is much columbolans what is a columbola it's a fly uh, non winged insect microscopic insect this i am just telling to tell you the importance of insects then what about the diversity of the whole insects at present about 1 million species are currently known to science how much is estimated scientists are telling around 5 to 30 million insects are there in the earth out of that 1 million is scientifically described then in india how many species are known about 70000 species are known under 7 27 orders which is only about 10 to 10, 7 to 10 percent of the world insect fauna you just to see as far as the diversity is concerned a very limited portion is known to scientific world but what is that question but we are always worried about worried about what charismatic species like tiger elephant rhinos so we are most of our people are worried about the this uh, loss of species diversity of higher animals only who is bothering about insects but the alarming decline of insects have never been taken into account and public are less aware of the issue i have a question are you uh, are you bothering about insects is something happened to insects who is bothering recently but in india or in other countries now scientists are doing work on insect decline causes of insect decline how it is going to affect the survival of human beings and other animals and uh, life forms this work is very famous by and it is 2019 so their findings are very very much alarming they warned about the decline of insects if it is not taken seriously terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems will collapse without insects this is not of my words it is the words of team of scientists current rate of insect decline is 41% it is twice high as that of vertebrates you just see almost 50% of insects are now lost then 40% of the world insect species extinct within next few they are telling within next few decades 40% of the insect species will disappear this is what is called insect problem now scientists are telling this is the problem we are going to face then how can we see insect decline we cannot see because nobody will identify insects are declining if tigers are declining we can easily find after taking the count of tiger population if uh, elephants are declining we can easily but how insects are declining whether it is visible it is not at all visible because people are not bothering about insects but one of the main evidence of insect decline is low food production due to loss of pollination what is meant by low food production nowadays agriculturists all these farming people are complaining that their crops are coming very well but fruits and seeds are not coming properly what is the reason because there is no proper pollination there are no pollinating agents are there so what to do we cannot uh, go to the agricultural field or our crop field taking under from male plant putting in their female part is it possible it is not at all possible so 
food production rate is decreased. The whole scientists are telling our rate of food production is decreased because loss of pollinate, pollinators. So pollination biology is an important field of research. You know, people are concentrating. Then loss of plant diversity due to loss of pollinators increase the number of herbivores. You can also see some group of insects are increasing and they are destroying the plants in a considerable way because their natural enemies are not there. Insect parasitoids are not there. Predators are not there. Then loss of soil fertility due to reduction of nutrient cycling. Insects also help for nutrient cycling. Sir, some common facts, accumulation of garbage due to less degradation. These are the evidences of insect decline. If any ecosystem is having these symptoms, you can say insect population is declining. Then most of our aquatic habitats are replaced by highly adaptable, tolerant, pollution resistant insect species. You can see anywhere water is polluted, you can see there are only mosquitoes and some flies. Why? They are highly adaptable. They are pollution resistant. They can only survive in such habitats. It's an indication of insect decline. Then I will inform you what are the causes of it. What are the reasons? I simply I can tell intensified agriculture is the main reason. What is in my intensified agriculture? We want everything in everything uh, very fastly. We want high production so that we are putting so many pesticides, so many fertilizers in the soil and reducing the quality of the crop fields. So what is the net effect? All the insect population will decline. Then we are using pesticides mercilessly. Then climate change. This is another important reason for insect decline. This is the reason for all animal decline or all life form decline. So climate change. Then, who are in more danger? Some insects are in more danger than compared to other. I will just uh, tell you some points. Species at higher trophic levels, those insects which are at higher trophic levels are in more danger. What is meant by this? At the trophic level, you may be knowing. Praying mantis is a predatory insect. It is on the higher trophic level because it is a predator. Grasshopper is sitting on the First trophic level, grasshopper is eating grass directly. So, there won't be much danger for a grasshopper when compared to the spraying mantids. So, those species which are at higher trophic, tiger is a species sitting on higher trophic level. So, if something happens to other trophic levels below, higher trophic level animals will be in danger. Then, like that, local endemic species, the chronic small pop, these are all groups which are in danger. I can say order Hymenoptera, bees, wasp. Lepidoptera, butterflies, moths, coleoptera, especially ground beetles and dung crawlers, and aquatic insects are in more danger. Why? Because these are having, these are of insects of high trophic levels, or they are local endemics, or they are uh, very, uh, very susceptible to changes in the habitat, etc. Then I will tell what are our limitations to tackle the insect decline. We have no data. We don't have any historical data about the biomass, abundance, diversity, etc. of insects. Then we don't know how many insects were there before 100 years back, before the advent of pesticides. These are all simple things. Then there are research gaps in our understanding of impacts of climate change. This is an important point. We are yet unable to unable to find out what, what is actually climate change, what is its effect on life forms. We are researches are going on. We are not in a final uh, shape. Then another thing: 40% of of our global land is devoted to intensive agriculture, making unfit for insect survival. That is the major problem. We have converted our global land unfit for insect survival. Finally, what is that? We are not many entomologists also. Why I am telling, in India, there were so many endemologists. They were doing active research in endemology, but presently the situation is different. So many insect orders are orphaned. Why I am telling insect orders are orphaned? Nobody is there to look after these insect orders. Previously, it was not like that. 
so you people i urge you people at least you i am not telling to everybody to take a research on insects but some people who are interested you can take insect for so how we will tackle the problem nothing is there we should promote policies that preserve restore insect habitats protect the most vulnerable insect species these are all simple things then promote ipm practitioners by ipm integrated pest management so don't go for only chemical pesticides to kill pest insect you integrate biological control physical control chemical control cultural control so many things are there for pest control then ban the use of cosmetic use of pesticides what is in the cosmetic use of pesticides apart from crop field nowadays people are using lot of pesticides to beautify their gardens parks lawns etc that should be controlled you know whatever pesticide we are pouring the grass lawns and all these things will go to the soil and it will affect so many organism so these are the things now so it is our duty to learn more about insects what to do try to protect the insect populations to argument the process of pollination predation parasitism cleaning of earth surface etc by any ways or means we will protect the habitats for insects it means that we keep so many plants or maximum number of vegetations wherever possible in your home your garden road side wherever if you want if you put more and more plants more and more insects will survive on that you will get more pollination services so it is very essential to study so it doesn't mean that you only study useful insects you have to study harmful insects also and they are all in the terrestrial ecosystem but it is impossible to study all insect groups immediately so priorities are to be fixed so one such priority group is order mandoidia now we will go to so i hope you got something some ideas about insect diversity how it is affected how we can protect anil is it visible anil yes yes sir everything is visible perfectly uh, i think uh, i am little speed can i reduce speed no 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 sir it's fine it's fine, it's oh. fine. Yes. now my dear students or my dear participants now i am taking into the field of playing mantids actually entomologists or general people are thinking that it is a minor order because most of these insects are these praying mantids are not at all visible to common people because their life is like that they are cryptic insects they will not come to uh, open places but you just see mantids are small to large stubby to i want to ask one question i think you might have all seen at least some places this praying mantids you might have wondered what this insect is doing with a four legs always in a praying mode so you can call it as praying mantis p r a y a n g or it is pre r e y a n g which is correct both are correct praying mantis because of its praying stature praying mantis because it is a predator eating the prey so both way you can mantis are the slow moving insects that are striking in appearance because of the peculiarly modified forelegs and you the second this picture it also appears like a praying mantid isn't it so these insects are not praying mantids they have the same four leg like praying mantids but you just see the wings you can compare the wings of these insects this is an order separate order called neuroptera they are called mantid flies or family mantispidae so don't confuse these two insects you can see the wings in neuroptera wings are net like it is transparent wings but in praying mantids or mantoidia wings are not like this neuroptera not transparent this is one of the other differences are also there but immediately you can diagnose this 
So praying mantis are active predator insects. That means they destroy. Spelling mistake is there. Both noxious and beneficial insects. Praying mantis cannot distinguish between which is beneficial or harmful insect. They will eat almost all insects. So their uh, effect on the ecosystem is both positive and negative. But I should say their effect is more positive because why I am telling that. Suppose uh, if praying mantis are eating butterflies, nobody will be happy. If praying mantis eat uh, honeybees, nobody will be happy. But if praying mantis will eat grasshoppers, people will be happy. Or mosquitoes, people will be happy. So they are more beneficial than harmful. Why? Most of their food items belongs to noxious insect groups like uh, mosquitoes, flies, grasshoppers, crickets, all these things. So then the another peculiarity of praying mantis, their head is freely moved. You might have noticed sometimes. They can rotate their head in hand 180 degrees angle and they can look over their shoulders. No other insect group is having this. Now you take an opportunity whenever you see a praying mantis in your surroundings, you just stand and watch the insect what it is doing he'll rotate the head he'll, uh, he or she will sometimes rub the foreheads inside the mouth and cleaning she may project or he may project the legs in front and again like a praying statue what actually insect is doing actually the raptorial what is in my raptorial front legs raptorial means having spines so a lot of spines are there that spines he will catch his prey and eat the prey. And what will be the size of the mantids? You can see mantids of small size, one centimeter up to 17 centimeters also. Then, what are mantids are generally active in sunny days. In sunshine, they are all, uh, all insects are active in sunny days and less, less active in monsoon and colder regions, mantids are less active. And they are well known for their camouflage coloration. What is mimicry? It is simply mimicry. It, they mimic sometimes flower, sometimes look like sticks, sometimes look like uh, uh, other things. So, order mandroid is often considered as a minor order, less significant and less diverse because they are less visible due to their cryptic nature and mimicry. But it is not like that. That you will understand from the remaining slides. What is the average lifespan of a praying mantis? It's almost one year, but it depends on the species. Some species will live six months, some will live up to three months, like that. This is a, a, a slide of showing their mimicry nature. Sometimes you can see a praying mantis sitting here. Here also you can see a praying mantis. Are you able to see? This is a praying mantis. This is a praying mantis. Immediately appears like a stick. This is a praying mandate. Here also praying mandate is appears like a flower. You can see. So, where to look for mandates? I already told you now. They are common in warm and cold. Excuse me. Anil, can I continue? Hello? Yeah, somebody has. Yes, yes, sir. It's perfect. Question we will raise after uh, after finishing this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody has just unmuted and uh, that's ah, why okay. some sound came. No. Please go. So, mandates are common in mainly tropical countries. That doesn't mean that they are uh, not uh, found in temperate regions. But number will be more in tropical and subtropical regions. And uh, they occur between altitudes 900 meter to 1400 meter. Above that, their diversity will be less. Uh, they are common in uh, less common in colder areas. But my, I have surveyed, I have uh, traveled throughout India. I have collected mandates from almost all parts of the country. My experience, I will share you. This is my field experience. I find more diversity in northeastern India, that is Arunachal Pradesh, that area, and Deccan Peninsula. And their diversity in eastern or western Ghat is comparatively less when compared to northeastern India. 
when less number of species occur in a desert, their number will be less. Then again, different species prefer different ecological niches. Some are found only in grasslands. If you you cannot locate a mantid in a grass because they will simply looks like a grass. That is why if you want to study mantids, you have to observe the all ecological niches in a habitat. You have to see search on bark of trees. You cannot uh, locate a mandate by simply looking because it appears simply like a bark. And as far as India is concerned, only one species reported from lecture the violence. I tried several times there, only one species I caught because it is automatically it is an introduced species, Enodora species. So something about their biology. Their metamorphosis is incomplete. You may be knowing what is complete metamorphosis and incomplete metamorphosis. Female will lay eggs, then eggs will directly emerge into nymphs. Those insects which have complete metamorphosis have larval stages, like butterflies. There are larvae are there, then pupae is there. But in the case of grasshoppers, cockroaches, these uh, groups of praying mandates, there is no larval stages. You can see young ones simply like adults but immature. Then the gravid female always mate with, with a male. But a very interesting feature is they show cannibalism. What is my cannibalism? Eating each other. Mainly females will eat males after mating. So poor males. <laughs> This is actually in spiders also show this type of behavior. And even cases are there, males will complete the mating process even without head also. See, without head might have been eaten by the female during the mating process, but the poor male will complete the mating process. What is mating process? Simply transferring the sperms into female spermatica. So he will complete that process with the tip of that body. Only genital region is required. How wonderful it is. Then after mating, female lays around 12 to 400 eggs. How she is uh, laying the eggs? Not singly. Actually, after mating is over, female will rest on some ticks or plant parts. She starts to release the eggs through her genital opening one by one along with a soapy fluid. You observe if some mandates are sitting somewhere, if some soapy fluid like froth is the tip of the abdomen, make sure that it is a female. She is in the process of OV position. So female release a frothy liquid. Then when coming to air contact, that liquid will become hard. So finally what will happen, this 400X or 200X will come out along with the soapy fluid, finally become a structure like this or like this. So this is called Uthika. You might have seen in this type of things in the field. People are not knowing uh, these are the eggs of praying mandates. So after this webinar, you just search in the field, your plants, ticks, error. You can, if you see this type of things, it is not a gall, not a fruit, nothing but these are <laughs> uthika of praying mites. Then, once started, the female will not leave the process of egg, egg releasing unless it is finished. That is another interesting thing. One, a, a female is in the process of egg laying. If you touch the female also, she will not fly, she will not move also. You can catch the female also. <coughs> so don't do that. She is doing such a wonderful process. Then, so shape of the Uthika is a, another tool for species identification. Shape of Uthika is genus specific. I will stress, I will tell you for each genus, 
shape of utica is different you can see this is one uh, genus utica this is another genus utica this is another genus utica. then incubation period about 16 days after 16 days nymphs will start coming out so just to see these are some photographs of utica formation egg laying you can see the tip of their female this utica then nymphs I already told you what, what are nymphs. Nymphs are the young ones. They look like differently from adults in some cases. This is a nymph of a mandid. It almost appears like an ant. Why they are mimicking ants is escape from their predators. <coughs> then, how many instars will be there? After seven instars, instars means intermediate stages of development, nymphs will develop all the body parts and become an adult then emergent time varies in different climatic zones in central india december to january eastern guards and northeast india late may to late then western india tamil Nadu, and all this is February to april so if you start collecting mandates from different parts of india if you come to kerala in uh, some august september you will get only needs Adult will available only February to March, February to April or up to May. So different parts of the country, you will get bandits in different seasons. So I will tell you the breeding biology of praying mandates and the rewarding area of research. Nothing is very little information is available on the breeding behavior of praying mandates, their mating behavior, uh, their <coughs> Uh, how many instars all these things so this is another field of research then what are the natural enemies of mandates mandid utica are parasitary hymena this is the picture of a hymenopteran parasite parasitoid which is attacking mandid utica how these fellows are attacking with this long pointed ovipositor these fellows will insert it's a female insert the rex into the Utica of you can see the holes here. What is these holes indicates? This parasite insert their egg inside this utica when it is soft. Then this parasite's larvae will develop inside this utica, eating content of utica, and they will emerge out. So they destroy the utica of praying mantis by simply inserting their young ones into this. That is called parasitism. Then some worms, they are called horse hair worms. There is a minor phyla called nematomorpha. This, this is a picture of a worm. This worm will enter the abdomen of female mandid through their genital opening and they live inside the female mandid. So that is also very much interesting. This is a parasitic worm, and this worm will take all the food contents of these praying mantids, and finally, praying mantids will die. Okay, now after all these things, I will come to my area of research. You may not be very much interested, but I will tell you the interesting aspect of taxonomy of mantids. So it's a group I already told you. Order Mandoidia is a group which is very suitable for studies on ecology, ethology, biocontrol potential, phylogeny, and taxonomy also. You can study the breeding behavior of a particular species of mandate. You can study the biocontrol potential of praying mandates in a particular crop system. You take a crop field and collect the praying mandates and identify them make uh, some biodiversity studies this many species these species are abundant these are less abundant like that biocontrol protection studies phylogeny also because phylogeny is an interesting field based on molecular studies there are so many praying mantids are there closely resembling each other so with the dna analysis you can study the phylogeny also and as far as taxonomy is concerned Praying mandates are poorly explored in northeastern India or northeast, very poorly studied. Most of Deccan Peninsula, not at all studied, and desert region, very little studied. 
Now I will come to the point. Previously, magics were placed under order Dictyoptera, in which cockroaches were also included. You know, taxonomy every day, every hour, every minute classification is changing. Now, presently, they are placed under order Mantoidea. This order contains this not 2500 about 2500 above species in the world. You just see India how many species only 170 species. So, whether it will be rewarding taxonomy study, definitely it will be rewarding. You will get about 1000 species or 800 species or 700 species in India if real field exploration is made. <laughs> so, in India, 170 species under about 79 genera. The, this all details are in this publication. Then this group is best studied in Maharashtra because of Dr. Hemant Gatte, a retired professor of Pune, Kerala, myself, some people are working, Tamil Nadu, all the old workers constantly from Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Shar Mukherjee and team, then Andhra Pradesh, some people are working. So according to, now I will come to the I don't know whether you'll be interested in taxonomy. Latest classification, order Mandodia is divided into 11 families. Now things are becoming complicated. These are the families. Don't bother much about all these things. If you are really interested to study taxonomy of praying mandates, you will go, you go to some publications. I will, I will tell you, this is the latest publication given the checklist of all Indian Mandodia. This is the best work in the world, Herman 2002. It will give all the details of World Mandoria. And now, latest 2019, many subfamilies are raised to the race of family. Now, presently, 29 families are there. Then, Mandid Morphology. If you want to study the Mandid Morphology, you refer this publication also. Okay. Now, I will just show you the diversity. World Mandoria, almost 15 families. You just see number of genera world, number of genera in India. How many are there? World for 34 genera, India 71 only. Poor representation. World species 2300 500. India representation 1070. You can see some families. Now you cannot tell which family, which man is, but I will tell you family man did it. I think most of the people might have observed some members, prime mandates in the field, larger size, green colored, big body size. They all belong to the family man today. You just see world around more than 1,130 species are known currently in India only 75. So there is a scope for taxonomy in India, especially these families like man today. Then you see hymenopodidae. Now come to India, just to see the state-wise picture. Kashmir, only four genera, four species. You will not get much there because their climate is temperate, but you will get more there. Then Himachal Pradesh, 23 species, you will get more species. If anybody from Himachal Pradesh, you will get more species. Uttar Pradesh, 55, but still there is a scope. Another question only 20, definitely you will get around 50 species. Then Meghalaya, this is the picture. So you select which state you want to study. Kerala 49. So some states are untouched. Gujarat only five species. Goa only 16 species. You will get so many others, so many species from Goa. Recently also some new genus is discovered from Goa by one Dr. Y. J. N. D. There are so many new genera you will get, species you will get. If you really do field work, I will again strictly point out that field work is required because you have to search the field very thoroughly. Lakshadiv, you will not get any more mandate because I almost visited all islands. <laughs> Only one species is there. But the population is very good in islands. They are actively protecting other insects. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, you will get more number of species, such a biodiversity hotspots. So, how you will collect? You can use an ordinary butterfly net. You can see, you can put a white background cloth. This is called a 
light wrapping it is called a light screens in front you will hang some uv light or whatever fluorescent lights and you just wait afternoon or after evening they will start coming towards light mandibles are strongly attracted towards light please remember best time to collect morning and late evenings sweeping with an insect net beating bushes and locate mandibles it is not easy so if you want to collect a mandible go to the field with a stick in your hand they call it a stick with you beat the bushes then only these creatures will come out they will not show you they will not fly like butterflies you cannot catch them they will they will hide always that is why people are not getting these insects so you collect an area go there with a stick and beat on bushes and beat on bark just simply beat on bark then the mandibles will start moving then only you can collect otherwise it is not visible light trapping is the best method i had experience when in namdafa national park arunachal pradesh when i put this light trap na mandibles are coming like anything they are start hitting on our faces that much larger size mandibles then rearing utica there is another method collect utica from field keep it in a bottle so after incubation period nymphs will come out but it's very difficult to rear nymphs you have to feed them continuously so for biodiversity studies diversity studies you can either select line transect you can walk in a line transect because biodiversity studies you have to put some standards line transect like watching birds you uh, walk on the transects beat bushes collect mandibles or large quadrates also you can select it hand picking is the another method you can hand pick you can use the net all these things so collection then how you will preserve like any other groups like butterflies moths a killing jar is required in the field you simply you may be knowing what is a killing jar take a wide mouth jar put some cotton and pour some killing agent ethyl acetate benzene chloroform etc after collecting you put the insects in that keep the lid closed sometimes after 10 minutes insect will die then spreading and pinning like other insects either you spread the both side wings like this you can use the thermocol board first you kill the insect take the insect you put a pin correctly in the thorax only one side always put a, insert the pin on one side only why it is one side if you put in the center characters may lose one side means character will be available in the other side also you just see the picture the pin is here then you stretch the wings a paper strip like this and keep this board in front in below a table lamp or an oven make it dry then after one day the insects will be ready for observation but one thing keep in mind insert the pin only once don't try to again reinsert the pin because once you insert the pin the body fluid will glue your pin with the body of match if you repeat the process the insect will rotate after drying it will be difficult for microscopic observation then after this i hope you are clear what i am telling then uh, the dried insects you keep in insect boxes like this but one thing i will again want to stress here the color of praying mantids will lose through the process of killing and dry so try to take maximum photographs in the field itself because in praying mantids field photographs are very limited and nobody is able to take photograph because they are not visible so while collecting also you note down the type of vegetation where you are collecting the type of habitat where insects are sitting latitude longitude attitude etc okay why you are collecting all these things you will get lot of data you can see some mantids only in the canopy of plants some mandibles always sit in the ground only some mandibles always sit on the bark of tree some mandibles always sit in the grass only so you can uh, classify their niches 
So these are the type of studies, ecological aspects. You take a, a, a habitat, select a habitat, a big quadrate. You observe mandates, you observe their ecology, habitat preferences. So many things are there to study. Then taxonomy characters. Main taxonomy characters. I am talking about classical taxonomy, not DNA taxonomy. Taxonomy characters are found on head, legs, thorax, and wings. It's an easy group to study. I will tell you, it's an easy group. Characters are easily visible. Then body is divided into this like any other insect. Thorax, head, thorax, abdomen. Thorax, first part is called prosoma. Then metrosoma. This is the foreleg. Oxa, trochander, femur, tibia, tarsus. Characters are everywhere in this body. So this is male. You may be knowing cockroaches because of dissection work. In males, you can see anal style and anal surface. In female, you can see only one type of this process, anal surface. So you can easily tell whether male or a female. Mandate, just catch the mandate and see the tip in the main two types of this process, the female it is. Okay. So this is a spread mandate. You just see, see how much variety in color. It's like a painting one. Yeah? You just see head, thorax, abdomen, four wing, hind wing, two pairs of wings. So you can see so many different uh, patches. These are all taxonomy characters. Forming with a brown spot in the tip like that. Then prosona means the, this part. This is prosona, B is paired four legs. Four legs, total three pairs of legs are there. Four wings are always larger than hind wings. Some groups are there without wings also. Then abdomen is divided to Ten segments. Then these are the characters. Just I will show you the characters. I will tell you one thing. Is for a big mandid only hand lens is enough, and a hand lens can uh, uh, observe the characters. But small groups microscope is required. An ordinary microscope is enough. A compound microscope, an ordinary microscope is no need of. And photography you can use any cameras. Always remember. Try, try to take photos in the field itself. That will be very good. So here do you see this is a dorsal view, this is a frontal view. This structure you can see in the face. If the hand lens also you can see. What is the shape of this? This is called a frontal spirite. The shape of this is a important taxonomic character. You can see it is pentagonal. Sometimes it is transverse. Sometimes this is this type. So depends on genus varies, species varies. Then eyes are symbol here. Sometimes eyes may, eyes may be having spines here. These are all taxonomy characters. Sorry. Now see the legs. This is the foreleg. Main characters are in the foreleg. Remember, you can see a lot of spines in this triangular area. This is coxa, trochander. If anybody knows sendomology, Similar terminologies are for any group of insects. Coxa, trochander, femur, tibia, and tarsus. This triangular area you just see full of spines. This, this is called, this is called actually, it is a crushing area. Once it catches the prey, with this spine, you can see one spine is here, and it will close this area, and it will grasp the prey in this area. No prey can escape from these type of spines. This is femora, you have internal row spines, external row spines, then disc the row spines, tibia, internal row, external row. It is very interesting actually. You can see, this is a femora ventral view. You may be confused you aren't having femora for this thing. But if you want to really study, you go through some good morphological publications. You can see internal spines. You can see external spines, femora. Tibia, you can see external spines, internal spines. So arrangement of the spines, number of the spines, all are taxonomy characters. And here you can see a groove. Here the groove. This is the groove where tibia is keeping. When the insect is resting, 
it will keep this part here in this like a cover for a knife when you are seeing a praying mantid it is taking this part out and catching the prayer and keeping this here so this is called a claw groove position of this groove is also important it is in the middle below middle above middle it's a taxonomy characters you can see for femora another picture this is internal view the groove you can see here this is internal spines one one big one small one big one small it's a taxonomy character these are external spines here only these are discoidal spines that is disc disc means this area external part internal part discoidal one two three four spines that also arrangement two small one big then two another small this is another view of femora you can see this external spine internal spines discoidal one two three four these are minute spines not very important this is our uh, these are also tibial spines femora another view now for any insect identification wing is a, an important character but in mantids not very important but you just to see this is the base of a praying mantid wing you can see this is costal area are you able to see my cursor cursor is visible anil hello anil anil sir perfect perfectly it's going perfectly sir i am cursor i am moving on costal area this is discoidal area this is anal area this is jugal area so uh, these are different uh, this very easy to learn this terminology this is costal vein this is subcostal vein and uh, then this is radial vein clearly here this it is medial cubital first that, that you will learn if you want to really interested to learn you can learn very easy so this area also different here you can see reticulation some species it is parallel veins are there some species blank is there so many things are there now i will show the tip of female tip of male you can see the difference easily how genital so most of the insect groups study of genitalia is very important for identifying closely related species you can see this is female genitalia not much complicated and diverse so that because of that reason no use in taxonomy because there is not much diversity is there in female genitalia only genital opening is there this is anal anal sulcus this is the tip of a male mantid you can see anal sulcus and anal style here so this complex here this area you can see some hard shaped structures here also this is very important in taxonomy because here we can call this clearight so many the this type of this this is a diagram of this complex taken out and slide mounted you can see so many clearights you can see here also say pointed like this these are copulatory organs this highly species specific if female genitalia and male genitalia not matching nature will prevent copulation that is the rule of nature that is why this genital area is species specific i will tell so this is a picture of a genital complex it is here only genital complex the last part so it's a complex only you can lift it from the specimens and i will tell you how the part is a process genital insect genital is a complex compound structure several sclerites i'm not going to read anil can i take another 15 minutes hello anil please sir go ahead go ahead sir so genital go ahead, sir. very important for taxonomic work it's a complex structure having different sclerites morphology of sclerites and their modification is an acid test in the species identification external morphology may vary but genital morphology never varies in species so <clears throat> female genitalia there is no variability so there is not much use for taxonomy study of male genitalia requires this is most important part of my taxonomy so you can cut and dissect out the genital complex from last abdominal portion and this can be done in two ways you can use freshly captured specimens from the field itself with the forceps i will show you you can take the genital complex and put in 70% alcohol for preservation otherwise you can dissect it from preserved specimen also 
after preservation drying also you can remove it but then you have to you have to what is that you have to soften the specimen if the specimen is dry put it in a desiccator with water feed on mixture in the bottom put a uh, blotting paper here keep the sp dried specimen here and keep it for one night though so you the water will soften the specimen then you can after that you can cut like this this is a, uh, you can just pin the specimen with a sharp blade you cut this area both sides this side and this side make a sharp blade then you with a small microscopes in entomology forceps are there you lift this portion up simply lift and another forceps you take this mass out here you can see it will be it is solid only so that the specimen will not be damaged you can simply pull out that genital complex okay i hope it is clear to you this is the genital complex you take that complex and put it in uh, what put it in 70 10 to 20 percent of koh if anybody is familiar in uh, entomology they know how to prepare slides the genital complex will be put in 10 to 20 percent koh boil or not boil just to warm it or keep for one overnight for what the sclerites will be softened tissues will be dissolved in the koh solution then wash it properly then pass through grade of alcohol already uh, in 70 percent alcohol then 80 90 100 and finally in absolute alcohol then you can put it on a slide put a uh, either either dpx medium or some other things uh, put a cover slip and it will look like this so all tissues are now dissolved in koh and the sclerites are now clear you can see some parts like this see the shape is, this is two species you can see the difference this structure is this uh, different shape so this structure is like this this structure is like this here so main part is uh, this right uh, this you will learn if you are really seriously studying matters okay so every species this shape of these structures it is either rightly rotated or left rotated all these things these are different genital complex of different genera or different species you can see the shape one thing it is like this one thing is like this these are all different okay you can study phylogeny by taking genital complex it's a very good publication this is stevenson this 2004 9 they have studied the phylogeny of mandoidia based on male genitalia studies but nowadays you know dna taxonomy is very popular you take any tissue body tissue of mandates and put it in uh, or sequence it you will get the you can study the phylogeny of mandates so though gross morphology of adult plays a dominant role in species morphology is always the basic things but in mandate an integrate approach using analysis of dna chromosomes studies on utica studies on structure of male and female genitalia etc will uh, help to unravel the diversity of mandates there are some genus are there all species look alike morphologically there won't be any difference you will be confused so in that case you will take the genitalia the dna and study it you will get a clear picture that is the role of dna taxonomy in taxonomy so you cannot uh, avoid classical taxonomy but for these confusing questions you can so based on this some signs some major works are there but in india no such studies are initiated there is enough scope is there for molecular studies foreign countries so much study is going on so this is the some based on molecular studies some roots how mandaria is evolved a common ancestor from their mandaria is diverged in some part of the uh, evolution later isoptera and blatteria these are closely related isoptera you know termites five times blatteria you know cockroaches then mandaria so both these three orders have common ancestor so people now they there are different uh, studies here you can see another this is called cladograms you may be knowing what's a cladogram 
is evolutionary history of a group. So you can see this is another study, Mekawa at all 19 million. According to him, Mekawa, Mandaridia is diverged from a common ancestor early, then uh, Blatteria came, then Isopria came, then this group, they are called wood roaches. Cockroaches and wood roaches. They are cockroaches attacking wood. So these are the, these are the cladogram of recent studies on phylogeny of Mandoidia. No doubt there is enough scope for DNA studies in Mandoidia. So what I am telling, taxonomy enough scope is there, biology scope is there, reproductive biology scope is there, biological protection scope is there. So now I will show some. I cannot take you to real taxonomy. Some characters I can show you. Uh, these are different uh, taxonomy characters. You can see different type of faces. Here frontal sclerite is this type. Here it is different. Here pronotum is like this with the spines. So these are all taxonomy characters. This is prosona, this is metasona. So its sides are angular. It's another generic character like that. Here you can see inside we have a four from her. It is leaf-like, a genus character. It is called a FSTR Sulai genus. The patterns you can see different patterns in different species. You can see it. this is a generic character here, a patch. They're all taxon. Very interesting. If you look at these insects under the microscope, you will be. This is a wing. You can see this is the anal vein. It is three branched, two branched, four branched. There are so many characters are there. You can see different variety. Here, see frontal sclerite is almost as broad as long. Your frontal spirit is transverse. This is genus Hyrodula. This is genus Tenodera. This is another genus. So genus difference is there. Now just I will tell you what are the families, common families. So one family, Metallicida, the name indicates metallic nature, but nobody will be able to see the uh, mandate in India because maybe it is a wrong report from India. But there is a chance it is reported from Rajasthan Maybe mistake by or uh, if anybody search Rajasthan in detail, you may get this. It is looked like this. This is family mandidae. Only two species are only one genus, metallic, uh, metallicus. Two species are known. You search Rajasthan area. Then another family. I told you now, seven families are there. So this also, there is no chance of your finding because there are around three centimeters long mandates. You cannot locate these mandates. They are always sitting on walls, uh, fungal infected walls, now nah, these uh, granite walls. Their color will be uh, you just to see exactly like the background. That is why I told you always carry a stick with you. You beat everywhere. If you beat the wall, these fellows will slowly fly from that area. Then you can catch it. Otherwise, you cannot catch these creatures. And another interesting thing is this genus is called Amorphoselis. It is very common, but not reported from many parts of the country. Why? Because nobody is able to collect them. They will always uh, move their anal say Like uh, that is an, another peculiar character of this. If you observe this. Insects, you can see this part, they will always vibrate this. So, there are three species, very interesting. More than three, you, you will get around five to six species from India if you really you check walls, bark of trees, and all these places. This is Ermia filidae, another genus endemic to Rajasthan. It is only known from desert. You go to desert, you search, you will get this very rare. Only one species reported, two species report from India. Then this is a comparatively bigger family, Hymenopodidae. It, the mandates looks like it. these type of mandates you might have seen somewhere, flower-like. So they are brightly colored, look like flowers, leaf, etc. Four wing often bears, uh, ring-like markings. Four tibia with the closely set external spine. These are all taxonomic. I don't want to go to detail. So now. If you are watching all these type of creatures, they are brightly colored. Just uh, decide, maybe family, family, I may know, for today. Very rewarding group to study taxonomically. You will get plenty of these bandits from our country. These are all other I may know, for it. Just to see. 
any mandate with the, these type of lags na immediately you conclude family i mean opodide this is fst asila this is st asila so many genus are there this is a, a rare record recently we made from kerala very rare it is reported from 1800s now only we got this species then another family bark mandrills family litergesidae oh you cannot distinguish these mandrills from bark of the tree they are similarly that is i told you carry a stick you just uh, beat the stick on the bark of big trees you can see some creatures are moving they will not fly also they will simply move around the tree you uh, you try in you know, another uh, you uh, with a stick you try in the so they will not fly away they will simply round the trees so that you can uh, hand pick them this is a genus called ambertiella very common and another genus is theopomba only found in namdafa national park of arunachal pradesh i could collect one specimen from there then another interesting group terracotide very awkward looking mandrills if you find any of these type of mandrills they are always they are almost associated with the grasses this fellow na this chrysocephalus uh, genus it exactly look like a grass you cannot uh, distinguish but you closely watch if uh, anywhere some grasses are growing fresh grasses if you closely or you just uh, move that grasses you can see these creatures very common but very few records from our country because of their camouflage all these these insect they are very common in dry grasses they are common in this insect is common in uh, green grass these are also dry grass then another family again brightly mostly green colored this is a very commonest mandid you can see almost in all parts of india especially southern india this is the commonest uh, genus this is the largest family i told you now family mandid the largest family and you just see these are small mandids this is a family called amelinae these mandids are always attracted to light most of these mandids people are collecting belongs to this family any houses everywhere in the evenings they will fly to the light so you can easily catch them brown colored not a big size but their peculiarities their wings are uh, their four margin of wings are ciliated so if you get this type of so any mandrills collected in the evening may belong to this mantidae this again members of the family mantidae i hope you might have seen all this this is a very common genus herodula this is also this is tenodira these are all different different genera you can see here i told you now not all mandrills are having wings fully this is a fully developed fully grown mandrill with reduced wings okay just try to recognize them this is uh, uh, tenodira this is uh, statilia this is etelocrova these are all scientific terms you may not be digesting all these terms this is mandis but it's very interesting these are all commonly available but this group is very rare empusidae this specimen you might have seen this is called violin mandrill see the shape of that mandrill it looks like a violin this uh, this fellow you can see everywhere but these are all very rare mandrills this family empusidae okay and this is a broad journey through the taxonomy now i will show you some major references you can prefer this you can buy through amazon not readily available but one thing is there in it, the language is different not english it is in latin very good book then mukherji asra 1995 this is online it is available it is published in uh, oriental insects you can download this is the first compilation work of indian mandrills mukherji asra and previous director said say ak ghosh they compiled all the scattered information and they published a monograph this is the basic work of anybody interested to study mandrills you start with this publication no doubt and this is a small small publication of mine regarding orissa mandrills when i was posted in orissa in berambur center i always spend my time in the evening watching mandrills coming to the let us say campus so many lights were there 
So I could collect around 28 species from the campus and published a small monograph. Then Vijayendi, Kerala fauna, Mukherjee as again, this is checklist 2014. This is 2017, the latest publication on mandated taxonomy. How this? These are, you can, these are some experts working in India. Tushar Mukherjee is a fellow. Uh, he is, uh, uh, sorry, he is an old senior professor, retired. Uh, so he is still working. Uh, this is Vijayendi, uh, madam, worked, worked in Kerala. She retired. And then uh, Gatte sir is uh, working in Modern College Pune. He only inspired me to take mandates. I am grateful to him. And Mukherjee sir also regularly helping me by providing literature. And you can also approach it. Uh, with the specimens, he will be still this year, old age also is very much interested in to see mandates. Then Parvati Chatterjee, student of Mukherjee, she, she is also doing. These are the few persons working in mandates in India. You can be become one among the people. Okay. These are some sites you can go get literature. Thank you. Thank you, Anil. My presentation is over. Hello. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your wonderful, excellent talk on the group of animals, which normally we won't talk. So, so now it's open for discussion. I will request the participant to please participate in the discussion so that um, instead of me asking all the questions, uh, it's better for the participant to ask questions and our expert, uh, uh, Dr. CM Sulisan, sir, will answer you all. Please go ahead. One by one, if you have any questions, just unmute your mic and ask the post, please. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Sir, I am Rahul Bhende from Pune. Sir, I had observed one uh, mantis species which are very tiny, about uh, two centimeters long. Color? It is a uh, it is female. It, ha it had laid a uh, five Uthika. Ah. I don't know the identification of that mantis. Okay, you take good photographs, then send me. And, I will tell uh, it, genus. And uh, sir, it, it doesn't have the wings. Ah, maybe uh, it is a short winged form. Adult who is laid, no, adult. I... Uthika formation means it should definitely it is a adult. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or there is a but chance that the young one will be on the Utika. Young ones never leave Utika after emergence. Maybe it is a young one also, nymph also. We cannot tell that. Okay. Sir, I, I had saw the emergence uh, of that Utika. Small ah. nymphs. So ah, you, have, you might have seen only nymphs only. Nymph identification uh, yes. level we can go, but uh, species identification will be dif uh, difficult. Because characters, sir, I, had, uh, I had observed, sir, I had observed adult also, but it is adult also. So, yes. uh, do you have any photographs with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then you send me the mail. I will tell you uh, which okay, genus. Sir, thank you. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, sir Anil, one more request that just end your slide as uh, screen sharing so that uh, the participants who are asking questions can be able to. Uh, uh, what to do? Screen sharing. Screen, screen oh. sharing, just stop screen sharing. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Just close that uh, screen sharing. Close now? Okay. Yeah. One minute. Eh? Screen sharing. Where it will close? Screen sharing. Screen, screen, screen of the screen. Stop. No, I am able to do it. Just close that. I'm unable to see anybody. <laughs> Yeah, your screen is still visible, sir. Screen is visible. Okay, I will just yeah, yeah. Yeah. No? Okay, sir. Next next question, if you have anybody has having question, please go ahead. Uh, 
Hello. Hello. Uh, I am a professor, uh, retired professor Satya Narayana from ABC uh, College Department of Wildlife Biology, Tamil Nadu. Uh, sir. Actually, uh, by your presentation, I have seen excellent uh, uh, digitalized captures of your insects. Really, it's, yeah. a, it's a great advancement nowadays. Earlier, we uh, used to collect a lot of insects and we have the morphology features or whatever identification. Now, what yeah. I understand that with the uh, digital photography, one can identify very clearly. Instead of earlier, we used to sacrifice a lot of animals. I think, uh, yeah. see, I am actually, I am not entomologist. What I do, I am advocating for the digital museum, digital technology, by which we can conserve a lot of animals. Oh, yes, right? yes. So, uh, so now I have seen excellent photograph by which, and uh, you also asked for identification, some photograph to be sent to a scientist for identification. And this is a very, very welcoming, welcoming move and welcoming technology so that we can conserve a lot of animals. This is what I want to promote in, in, in throughout the country that we must have a shift instead of uh, uh, collection and preserving and killing of the animal, we can minimize it for the time being uh, based on the digital technology. Am I right, uh, doctor? Yep, it's a good suggestion, sir. Actually, there is no need of killing any individuals also. If you are having good photographs, in the field itself, you can only collect minimum samples which are confusing only. That is my suggestion to students. Don't uh, kill more insects because they are very useful. Na? So, uh, if through higher animals, there is no need of collection also. Just to catch or identify from the photographs and release it them in the field. So no need of collecting. But small insects, not small groups, it is uh, collection is hurt, sir. Because identification is difficult in the field. That is my... Okay. I really, I'm very happy that these, these are the conservation movement we require. A lot of scientists, young scientists, very really good model. You are yeah. a very good model for us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more questions? Hello. Hello. Pranam sir. Pranam sir, this is Pallavi from CJRC yeah. Jabalpur. Ah. Sir, recently I have st started studying Orthoptera, sir. Okay. So, the, the family Hymenopodidae is very much resembles like Orthoptera. Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Sir, is only the structure of foreleaf in Mantodia and Hinlinga of Orthoptera is the oh. only distinguished character. Yes. To collect I in the fields. Never confused with orthoptera. No mandates will be confused with orthoptera. You just check the raptorial four legs. That is not found in any orthoptera. Okay. That is okay, the only it can separate from all animal groups. I told you now. So some raptorial racks will be very small, but you have to very closely uh, look. But uh, grasshopper, this orthoptera character itself is different. Their head shape, everything is different. Wings are different uh, because uh, they are, have straight wings only. Now, mandibles are having different type of wings. Their antenna is different, so there is no chance of confusing with orthoptera. But I am feeling. Okay, sir. Sir, another question is, sir, can we directly study the genitalia morphology characters, other than looking for other morphological character for taxonomy identification? Sure, sure, sure. You can identify around 60% of genus and species through external morphology, but some genus genital study is essential. Uh, like I will tell you, Humbertiella, they all look like, uh, look similar only. So in that case, you have to go for uh, genital studies. Not all groups uh, is not required at all. Hyrodula, there is no need of genital studies. Uh, it, dep it depends on the genus and group. Clear? Okay, sir. Sir, another one, sir. Sir, what are the basic character of mantorids? Because uh, in your presentation, sir, I have found the family-wise, the mantorids are different. Oh. So, what are the basic character of mantorids? If I have, I want to collect mantorids from field, only mantorids, what are the basic character of mantorids I have to looking for? I have to look for. You want to identify mantorids from field itself, no? I already told yes, you. They are very cryptic. They will not move fast. So uh, grasshoppers and all these things, they will easily fly. But uh, their peculiar movement, you just observe some mandates, then you will get They will not move uh, from their, their city. And always they will move their forelegs. Very silently they will move their forelegs uh, to and fro. That is the 
best identifying character okay thank you so much sir you clear yes sir very well sir thank you so much sir sir i will contact you through mail sir for okay, further no. Compel, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Question from the participants. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I have a question, please. Um, no. um, I am a complete novice in terms of uh, entomology, and it's my personal interest that I follow insects. What I want to ask about uh, praying mantis is that many times I have noticed that uh, there is a in their eyes there is a small black dot that seems to move in whichever direction you go. What exactly is that? Actually, that is a reflection, ma'am. Their eyes, they are rotating their head only. Eyes are not rotating. When they are rotating their head in 180 degrees, if light falls on the compound eyes, it will reflect like a spot. So you will think that the spot is moving. Eyes are eyes are not at all moving. Their head is moving. Got the point? Okay. That is the reflection only. So sometimes you can see some spines on their eyes also, very long spines. This uh, what you observed is a reflection of light on the eyes. So okay. This, rotate the eyes the whole neck they can rotate 180 degrees so that a reflection of light will happen and then it falls on the compound eyes okay, all right yes okay because it also gives the a feeling that you know that those dots are exactly following you uh, no no dots are not moving but it's okay. Moving. okay all right thank you Please go ahead if somebody is having some pose. Any more questions? Yes, sir. some more questions have been typed by students uh, in the box. Some Havani Saus is asking the insects, those who exhibit cannibalism during mating. Don't they like mating or they for mating only for food? Not clear any. Don't they like mating? Either they don't like mating or they prefer mating only for food. Or misinterpret their mate as a food. <laughs> as we see from most of the spiders. What is the cause? Yes. You want? Cannibalism, the cannibalism, they are not uh, doing in mating only. They are doing uh, others also. They will sometimes eat together. If you put a different species in a bottle, they will eat, kill and eat each other. So that is an important point. Na? Whenever you are collecting different mandates, always keep one mandate in one bottle. Otherwise, during the end of the day, you will not get any mandate. They will eat each other. So this happened to me several times. Unknowingly, we will put 10 mandates in one bottle. Evening, only one will survive. Baki, he will eat all the others. So, taxonomic studies, if you want to identify mandates, always keep in mind the cannibalism. That they are doing in mating, some spiders are also doing. That's the reason of that, I don't know. That may be their genetical makeup may be like that, I don't know. Is it clear? That doesn't mean that they are not liking mating. <laughs> and she also asked to our questions that do these male mantids uh, to take defensive precautions before mating, or simply they become a prey to female. And uh, so, uh, that is also a, uh, very interesting to observe mating behavior. So many different species approach male approach in different direction, female uh, receives in different manner. This is another aspect of uh, uh, behavior studies. Different species show different behavior. Some uh, sometimes females are larger, males are very small. First, she, uh, he will climb on the body of the female. So many things are there. So that is ethology studies is very interesting. If male and female are together, start observing, uh, observing how they are starting mating process. If you can make a, people can make a paper on that. Yeah, mating behavior of that species, this species like that. There are different patterns of their behavior. I have observed very few only. 
because i am you know i am a basically taxonomist i have no time to uh, observe the mandates where is the time needed so if any anyway students are interested now they can go to field and watch all these things yes yes sir uh, ankita mishra she asks uh, is not it good uh, for crops when insect type locust population declines hmm. not clear pardon uh, she is asking sometimes decline of population is good like uh, locust decline population declination is good for uh, crops and all those things yes no 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 some groups only if the population of pest is declining that is good if the population of pollinator pollinators are declining what will be the effect see that depends on the species uh, you are interested generally population of in, uh, insect population decline is harmful to other uh, life because most of the insects are pollinators that is the another reason pests are very uh, it's a less fraction of the total insect diversity okay so insect population declines will affect the survival of other uh, living organisms on the earth because of the process of pollination is it clear swagat rat swagat rat oh, another uh, participant he asks is there any type of impact of seasons on the breeding process of these insects yes i already told in my slide na actually uh, rain temperature these are all uh, affect this uh, breeding behavior in rainy uh, time uh, they will not much breed but uh, immediately after the rain uh, post monsoon uh, they start breeding so different parts of the country have different uh, patterns so temperature humidity all these things are affecting their breeding behavior that is paka that is another field of study you just study the effect of the uh, rain temperature all these things swagat also asks uh, is mantis bite human beings pardon mantis mantis bite human beings yes but that is not biting if you catch a ma big mantis na it will insert that uh, tibial spine into your finger wherever you are catching so immediately what is that is a reflex action we will release that insect it is only an escape mechanism so you expect any manner you free catch means they have strong tibial spines both tibia have strong spine like a knife they will just insert that knife into your body i got a severe sting and blood also come out sometimes and their mandibles are very strong they will bite you these are all escaping mechanism only they are defense mechanism but we can any animal will bite you know anything okay but there are some videos are there mantis are eating snakes mantis are eating birds these are all very rare occasion that is not a commonly occurring in nature maybe in artificial we will put a some big mantis and if you give a uh, lizard to that sometimes uh, she will attack the lizard and eat that is not occurring in the nature regular but people will think that mantis will uh, eat birds mantis will eat uh, fishes there are cases are there very rare into the vaccine uh, can we use 70 percentage of alcohol for preservation instead of ethanol 70 percent ethanol ah uh, 70 percent ethyl alcohol is the best uh, preservation yes. medium ethyl alcohol or ethanol but one thing is there before putting in alcohol you can uh, we have to note down the color within hour the color will go because color is another important taxonomic character this color all will dissolve in the alcohol the specimen become only white so in a preserved specimen in alcohol it is very difficult to uh, species identification so before putting in alcohol before drying immediately with a, you note all the color patterns how the color is the different color pattern that is most important in uh, mandate taxonomy color is very important sir we have almost taken all the questions that are in chat box if still there is someone who can ask some questions for the knowledge is okay. uh, please time go is... ahead and please try uh, if it, i have time okay no problem <laughs> I don't know how uh, my presentation is effective. I think somebody will 
start observing mandates after this. Yes, sir. Yes. Is I hope we have taken, yes, sir. I hope we have taken almost all questions. And Swagat mm -hmm. also asks, can we cross with two species in captivity? Can you? Can we cross with two species in captivity? And it's a it pets in foreign countries. It is a pet pet only. People are crazy about keeping mandate in aquarium tanks and big glass jars and they are feeding regularly like pets only. It is a market you get mandates in foreign countries as a pet. Big big mandates. You can feed them, you can observe them, you can make them. All these things we can do in captivity. It's a very friendly insect you can keep anywhere. But you have to feed properly. Yes, yes. Sir, so we have I, taken al almost uh, all questions of the participants. And uh, I hope there is no more questions. And I sincerely thank you for the uh, very elaborate and uh, touching almost all the points of the um, one of the very uh, rarely talk animals, both ecology, biology, taxonomy, field survey, collection, preservation, and identification. Sir, thank you very much for your kind presence and uh, enlightening the uh, complete forum uh, for today. I would like to thank Director Zoological Survey of India also for uh, permitting and uh, encouraging us uh, throughout this journey. And I thank all the participants and uh, especially Professor Satyanayan sir, because he used to be present in many of the lectures and enjoying us uh, like anything. Sir, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, you, sir. And thank, thank you, you all participants. Okay, thank you. Very thank much. you sir. Okay, thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.